G'day guys, welcome back to the uh, True Footy YouTube channel. You only forgot the name of the channel uh, as we do our round seven footy tips and predictions. Uh, thank you for bearing with me this week. It's been a busy week and uh, of course getting this up on a Thursday morning is far from ideal, but thankfully it is a round with a Friday night game because of all the Monday games. So uh, back to normality to some extent. Yeah, the footy tipping has gone uh, not ideally. I think the last two weeks, most people are getting sevens, eights, nines, uh, and I'm stuck with fives and sixes. <laughs> Story of my love life, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't even get fives and sixes. But I've slipped to 299th out of a, a thousand odd um, after being in the top 80 two weeks ago. So as you can see, a fair fall from grace from myself. I really want to ideally stay in the top half, but you know, I want to actually aim for the, the top 100 and consistently stay there. But we will shout out the weekly winners as we always do. The round six winner is someone called Half Chat, who scored a perfect nine and had the best margin of those who tipped nine correctly, of which there were five, uh, with a margin of five. So well done to Half Chat. And the overall leader is once again, Creamy Jordan, who has scored 41 tips and a margin of 86. So a tiebreaker between he and Joycey, actually, co-founder of this YouTube channel, uh, whose name is something about Kevin Federline in second place. But well done, Creamy Jordan, for leading the league once again. In the fantasy stakes, we have James English once again leading the competition. Um, surprise, surprise, constant leader of this league with an average score of 21.64. So he's absolutely killing it. I would like to find out his uh, fantasy team secrets because this is ridiculous. Before we get into the footy tips, I want to thank everyone who's jumped on board lately. This channel is growing nicely. It could be growing a little bit faster, though. My analytics do still say that 42% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying it, as I always ask, please consider subscribing. Help us get a little bit closer to 20K. That would be lovely. But anyway, enough banging on about YouTube. Uh, let's get into this round of footy tipping. Uh, as you would have seen, Melbourne still the only undefeated team now with 6-0 and and in second place, Fremantle which disgusts me, uh, ahead of Brisbane and Sydney and St. Kilda as well, all sitting 5-1. and one. At the bottom of the ladder, you've got North Melbourne still just, just in percentage ahead or behind, rather, of West Coast, my beloved Eagles, in 17th spot. So it'll be interesting to see if that changes. I use the word interesting liberally because it's not something I'm keen to find out, but it may well change this week. So we'll get into the footy tips uh, with my team playing on the Friday night against Richmond. Uh, West Coast, uh, as you would have seen from my videos, I've done two now. We did the live stream. Very, very disappointing at the moment. And, I mean, it's tough to see how we can realistically be competitive in this game. I know Richmond have dropped uh, their last two after a good win against the Bulldogs, going down to the rainy premiers, of course. No shame in that. And the week before, going down to Adelaide again. No real shame in that, considering how well they're playing. I believe it's been confirmed Dustin Martin is uh, out for this game. He's not playing. Uh, like it was speculated, he might be returning for this game. They're also resting Cochin. And one other play that escapes me right Right now, but I'm sure in the comments you can let me know. Uh, either way, it's probably three key players there that they're opting not to play. And for me, resting two key players kind of indicates they uh, probably don't respect this as a game that they think they could realistically lose. I could be wrong on that, but it's just the way it reads. And to be honest, that's that's a fair prediction. So I'm going to say Richmond should win this game. They've been playing a lot better than West Coast. Uh, let's call it 35 points. Geelong versus Fremantle at Cardinia Park is an interesting one. Geelong, far too good for North Melbourne, as you'd expect them to be. They're still consistently that good team at the moment. Jeremy Cameron and Tom Hawkins proving quite a handful, and they're coming up against a young up-and-coming team, Fremantle. I think they're the second youngest team in the league. Playing some spirited football, each week getting better and better. You know, two weeks ago, the story was Taverner kicks their goals, and that helps with their structure, having that big key forward in. He's out this week, although they did have a few smalls bob up, uh, in particular Shaw's last week with three goals as well. That being said, I think it's a big out, and I think Sean Darcy might be missing this game as well. So structurally, that's a big hit to Fremantle in this game, in a game they're going to start underdogs in anyway. So I don't think it'll be a shellacking like it always is uh, when a few teams, including West Coast, go to G. MHB. I don't think Fremantle have quite that poor record there, but with all their plays in, I would have said maybe they lose by a couple of goals, so I'll stretch it out to about 24 points. Geelong should win this game, you'd think, but Fremantle's not without any chance. Adelaide versus GWS at Adelaide Oval. I remember last year, GWS smashed Adelaide at Adelaide Oval, but the, the storylines of their two seasons have been different this year. Adelaide, once again, playing spirited football like they did at times last year, but they're doing a bit more consistently now, claiming three wins, I think it is, to this point. Conversely, GWS sit in the bottom four one and five and been very disappointing the crows just toppled the bulldogs over at ballarat which is a massive win and the form taylor walker's in at the moment really really a massive x factor and important structurally as well to that team gws looking a bit listless it's really really hard to to have any faith in them winning this game even though last year it went pretty well this year they look like a different team so unless toby green pulls a rabbit out of the hat and you know kicks five on their way to victory i'm gonna to have to say adelaide should win this game 
by 20 points. Melbourne then play Hawthorne. Uh, Melbourne coming off a win against Richmond where they had they kicked a little straight, they probably won by a bit more. Seem to be cruising in, you know, third or fourth gear at times this year, but still better than all the teams they've played so far. Bit of COVID adversity for the Ds this week. I think it's Luke Jackson, Cozzy Pickett, and Tom Sparrow out for them, as well as their coach Simon Goodwin. But as we know from this year, your coach missing the game doesn't seem to affect the result too much. They're coming against Hawthorne, who were pretty spirited against the Swans, particularly in that first quarter, but ultimately couldn't stem the tide. And Sydney eventually just were the better team for longer in that game. And while they only got in front with 10 minutes to go, ended up winning by seven goals. So Hawthorne's still an up and down side. I think there is an upset chance in this game because of the last year's draw. It makes me think that Hawthorne can play Melbourne well. So this would probably be my upset of the round if I had to pick one, but I'm, that doesn't mean I'm going to tip it. I just think that would be the most likely upset. So I will tip Melbourne to win this, but I think it'll be a good game by 18 points. St Kilda versus Port Adelaide. Uh, St Kilda sitting 5-1 and one and Port Adelaide 1-5. and five. So two opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of performances this year. St Kilda have really built momentum nicely. They're getting goals out of their talls and their smalls. Midfield's been productive. They're defending well and they've got you know a variety of options in front of goal. So they're building really nicely as a potential top four outside chance in my opinion at the moment. Port Adelaide on the other hand should have been a top four contender this year and have only looked like it in one game uh, where they battered West Coast last week by 84 points. Again, it's hard to get a read on that because West Coast was so poor. How good does that mean Port Adelaide played? It's still a little bit up in the air, but they saw some really encouraging signs. Marshall, Finlayson kicking five. Connor Rosie moves into the midfield, gathers 31 touches, wins the BOG medal as well. So uh, I think with Cairns, there's a, I think there's a good chance it's going to be raining. So it's going to be a very contested game. Both of these sides are strong contested sides. I think you have to tip the form here and say St Kilda have been better this year and should win, but Port Adelaide not without their chances. Carlton then play at North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium, and this one actually might be a little bit juicier than you would have thought a few weeks ago. Carlton coming off a disappointing loss against Fremantle. Uh, their ruckman went down, and they ended up getting beasted in the ruck, and that's not the only reason they lost, but that was a big factor, and we've seen a bit of a vulnerability with Carlton um, when they're getting tailed up in the ruck as well. So their form is dipping. You know, that first half against Port Adelaide was fantastic, but I think the six quarters since then have been fairly average and haven't been able to really muster out a full four-quarter performance yet this year, and the momentum's kind of trending the wrong way. They come against North, who uh, won one game this year, and their average losing margin is 53 points or something ridiculous, and frankly, they've just looked that far off it, but sometimes teams win out of nowhere for no reason. So I do think this is another upset of the round contender, because I don't trust Carlton that much at the moment. That being said, you have to tip the better team, so it would be very brave to tip North, and I'm not going to do that, because I have tipped too many wrong ones this, this year so far and it's burned me. So I will tip Carlton. I'm, I'm iffy on it. So 22 points Carlton. Collingwood then play Gold Coast at the MCG. Last year, I believe the Suns won this fixture at the G um, in a year where Car uh, Collingwood finished second last, whereas they currently sit three and three. And I've looked you know, not far off finals level at their best this year. They haven't been that consistently good, but either way, they've been a far stronger side than Gold Coast, I would say, on the surface level, uh, with last week beating Essendon, who I think is probably around that Gold Coast level. So Gold Coast aren't without their chances. They got smashed, as you'd expect, by the Lions in the Q Clash, so not too sure what to really take out of that, because that's the sort of result that you would have predicted. And uh, the fact that they've won here in the past might give them a little confidence. That being said, Collingwood should be far too good. So I'll tip them by 20, you know what, 30 points, a blowout. Next, we have a battle of uh, two underperforming teams based on last year's performances. These two teams actually met in the finals and the Bulldogs sit two and four and Essendon one and five. So that's a combined record of three and nine this year for two finalist teams. Uh, it's been a rocky road for the Dogs. They haven't looked convincing at all this year with uh, the win over Sydney sort of indicating that there is some sore quality there. But last week going down against the Crows at Ballarat, uh, in a game where Adelaide were really inaccurate, kicking eight goals, 15, and the Bulldogs still couldn't find a win the game. Their defense kind of got tailed up a little bit, conceding 16 marks inside 50 as well. So they're looking a bit vulnerable. They're coming up against Essendon, who their one win this year has been a four or five point win over Adelaide at Marvel Stadium, and the rest of it's been a fairly underwhelming performance. On the plus side for them, you know, guys like Merritt are back in the side and Parrish playing really well last week. I think he had 44 uh, in final possessions against Collingwood. They've been missing players, um, but I don't know if it's enough for me to edge my tip their way. There's a chance Essendon win this because I'm not convinced by the Bulldogs, but I think I'm just going to predict that the better team wins this game. So I'm, I'm going to go with the Bulldogs here, but they haven't convinced me enough to feel confident about this. So I'll say the Bulldogs by 20. 
Then we have Sydney versus the Brisbane Lions at the SCG, and this is a real top four clash. In my opinion, the second and third best sides in the competition right now, and a potential grand final preview. You never know if Melbourne will, uh, you know, shit the bed at the last minute. It seems to happen when teams are heavily favoured. But anyway, we'll talk about this game specifically. Sydney uh, coming off a good win, as we touched on earlier, with a, I think it was 41 points in the end, or 39 points, or something like that. I think it was 41 over the Hawks. The Hawks got up to that bright start, like I said before, and the Swans sort of overcame that slowly. It took them a while to really put their dominance on the scoreboard, but when they did, they really broke Hawthorne's back and are putting together a very good, consistent season this year, with just the one loss against the Bulldogs in Melbourne. Brisbane, on the other hand, equally been very good and consistent this year, with just the one loss this season as well to Geelong again. So they both lost to, to quality teams on their day. So it's a smaller ground uh, as well. I feel like Brisbane are a good contested side. Maybe getting burnt on the outside might be their vulnerability. I'm sort of talking out of my ass here, but I think that's the case. And using that logic, I think that may mean they're probably well suited to the SCG. And I feel like the Swans form at the SCG has been patchy. Not so much this year, but in years past. I'm actually genuinely torn on who to tip here because I've kind of talked myself in to tipping Brisbane but I felt like I was going to tip Sydney at the start of this video. The logic that I've displayed has made me lean towards Brisbane, but that being said, I think I'm going to go with my gut and say that Sydney win, but I'm not convinced by that. Gee, I'm getting less and less convinced each and every round at this stage. This one is a toss of a coin. I really don't know who's going to win this game. I had to look up the head-to-head -head for this game uh, to try and split it because I do like to look at head-to-head -head and see how teams play at certain grounds. And uh, it's occurred to me that Brisbane haven't played at the SCG since they became a good size. So their last game here was back in 2017 and they got annihilated, as you'd expect, um, as Brisbane were fairly average that period. You know what? I think I'm going to go with the Lions, to be honest. I feel like I'm going to have Sydney fans annoyed by that. Either side could win. But I think I'm going to go with the Lions here in a thriller. Let's call it Let's call it seven points. So as we can see on the ladder there, that is the conclusion of the round. And uh, Melbourne and Fremantle are still the top two. Brisbane holding into the top three. And Sydney, uh, one of those teams, will slide out of the bottom four, you'd think. In my prediction, it'll be Sydney, who go down to fifth. And uh, yes, down the bottom of the ladder there, you have my Eagles on percentage. Uh, taking out 18th spot, so that's just fantastic. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of my predictions. What's your game of the round? For me, it's got to be Sydney versus Brisbane, and upset of the round, what did I say it was? That's right, Hawthorne to beat Melbourne. Um, I could see North Melbourne just pulling out a win as well, but I'll lock it in as Hawthorne versus Melbourne. Um, but again, I, I've tipped conservatively here because I can't afford to take too many risks with how poor my tipping's been lately. But let me know in the comments what you thought of the video, your nominations for those uh, games of the round, and I uh, hope you're enjoying the content, guys. I really appreciate all the support, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.